Hello friends. Today I would like to discuss with you and share with you some information about the uh, USA Green Card process. Uh, you might be surprising that um, what does it mean by 15 days process. Uh, this is my personal experience. I'm not an agent. Okay. Uh, because I went through this process and it was really the fastest one. So I thought I should share it with you. It might be helpful for some some of you. All right. So uh, yes, it is possible within 15 days uh, that your green card application could be approved in 15 days. Okay. Uh, in total, it might take six months. What does it mean? I will explain it to you in a while. This uh, application uh, process is only for researchers that I'm going to talk about because I'm also a researcher and I went through this process. Uh, I have also a PhD degree. So my focus is uh, for these people who have PhD degrees. Uh, if some of you have master's degree, that's also possible. But uh, the point is, do you have research experience or not with a master's degree? If you have, then you can also apply for this uh, US green card, which is also known as permanent residence. Okay, so I will also explain about the fees as well. So let's see what uh, I have uh, to share with you. So it's called Extraordinary um, Ability Program. Huh? So it's also called under EB1 visa. What is this program for? Extraordinary Ability Program is for uh, people who have uh, demonstrated something good in science, arts, education, business, and athletics. Okay, uh, you might have something uh, achieved at national or international level as a researcher in any of these fields. What does it mean then? Uh, I will explain that to you. So basically, you will be applying for this kind of visa, EB1 immigrant visa. But you can't apply this by yourself. You need to hire a lawyer that is that should be based in USA. I will explain that to you in a while. What is the criteria for uh, applying for this kind of uh, uh, program? Uh, these are actually the criterion. So you need to fulfill at least three of these. If you uh, fall uh, any, uh, any three of these, then you might qualify for that kind of program. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is good to visit this website. This is US government website. And basically you are going to apply for this form uh, and visa. This is called temporary. In the beginning, it's called temporary green card. Then it will be really green card. So I-140. Please visit this website and try to grab as much as information as you can. So what is the what are these these things? First of all, uh, you can apply if you have received any national or international prize or award in your country or internationally. Okay or even at your if your organization which is also national level uh, kind of thing like you're working in a university national level university and university has given you um, any kind of award best service award or researcher award then you might qualify for this one this is one one thing you can fulfill another thing need to be fulfilled is membership in an association like IEEE or ACM or any national or international level as a level association. Uh, so you need to have a proof for that. Publish material in professional or major trade publications or in newspaper or any other major media. If you have published your article in a newspaper or of course you have a uh, publish article in journals or conference, which we will talk in a minute. 
So any kind of publication that is recognized at national level or international level that is also considered in this application. Original scientific or scholarly or business related contribution of major significance in the field that you are working. You might be working in computer science or social sciences or basic sciences or even English or whatever field you are working in. Authorship of scholarly articles in journals or other media, other media like good conferences like A star conference or A, con A ranked conference or any other conference that is related to your field or you have earning a high salary. High salary is not defined actually, but probably if you're earning more than 5,000 per month, that could be considered, I guess. Uh, um, I did not apply for this one because my salary was not that high. So I went through, uh, through these um, uh, points. Participation in a panel or individually, you have become a judge of something, but you need to have a proof for that, like invitation or you got certificate of uh, appreciation or you have pictures. So these things sh you should have a proof for that. Okay. So this program, as I mentioned, is under Alien of Extraordinary Ability program. So if you think you can fulfill any three of these, then you should not wait, I, I suggest you can apply for this program and can get green card. Uh, as I mentioned, you can't apply by yourself. You need to have a lawyer. And I'm not marketing for this lawyer. He was my lawyer and one of my friends, actually he also applied through this guy. He is also a PhD degree holder. His name is Dr. Kai. This is his company. You can visit his company. <clears throat> uh, why did we choose this guy? because actually we did some research and we um, ranked the lawyers in a sense that uh, how much they are going to charge us, low cost lawyers, uh, medium cost or high cost. This guy, he was in the medium cost. He charged us, uh, in my case, charged me $5,000, okay. Uh, and once you have agreement with him, <clears throat> he will apply uh, for the petition for this program. Okay, this is the same program that we discussed. And he will create a Dropbox folder and you will upload all your documents there and he will also uh, upload his documents for you in this Dropbox folder in a shared one. So I'm not in the marketing for this guy. You can search any other lawyer on internet and you can search like this. Uh, USA Extraordinary Ability Program USA and lawyer. So if you search this thing in Google, you will find a list of lawyers, many. They will be offering several uh, services, almost the same service but some of them are really more prominent and they will charge you more. It's up to you, okay? Okay, <laughs> this is the process like phase one, two, three. Uh, my lawyer, he sent this to me. If you hire him or any other one, he will also send this to you that these are the steps. This is client side, this is your side. You need to do these things. And guys, actually, you need to do a lot during this. Everything will not be done by your lawyer. He will guide you, but many things you will need to do. Okay, so this is his part. He will do these things. So let's go through these things one by one. In the beginning, you start the process. How do you start? You will, first of all, you will provide your CV to him. You will send email to him, your CV. As in provided, you know, the email address in the previous slide. So he will give you a free evaluation that is your case strong enough or not. If not, you should not apply for that and he will not charge you anything. Uh, but if you he, he thinks that your case has a strong, um, uh, you know, 
material to support, then he will go for it because this is also his credibility as well. If he applies for many, many people and his applications are rejected, rejected, that's not good for him either. So he won't accept your case in the beginning. All right. So if it is done, so after accepting uh, your case, pay initial legal fee. So initial legal fee means you will pay 50% of his fee, which is like 2,500, which I paid. Maybe he has in, uh, increased a little bit more now. I don't know, but I applied, you know, <coughs> uh, in 2016 and my case was approved in 2017 and everything was done. Uh, so it was like that. Okay. Uh, 2500 I mean half fee all right so once you sign agreement with him he will provide you sample documents okay uh, I will share with you some examples of the sample documents as well then based on those sample documents you will start preparing your documents and then this is very important part he put a star here see uh, you need to provide five researchers, five scholars. Uh, out of these five, three to four must be from USA. These five scholars should actually endorse you or recognize your research, that you are really a good researcher in the same field. They should be also in the same field. If you're from computer science, they should also be in the computer science field. So what you will need to do is you need to email to these scholars. You need to find who are they. Okay. And then you will uh, uh, tell them that you are interested in green card program and they need a scholarly uh, recommendation letter. So I want to request you that please uh, help me in this regard and give me a recommendation letter for me. So who will trust you? Because People don't know you, so how you're going to do that? The, the way that I adopted or my friends adopted was uh, we went through our publications or two things. Our publications that, uh, who are the people that we cited in our papers? And then we emailed them that, hey, we, wrote this paper and it was published in journal and conference. We cited your work and we are on the same boat in the same field. So now I am in this program. I'm applying for this program. Could you please help me to write a, uh, to uh, have a recommend le recommendation letter for me? He will not write recommendation letter for you. Your lawyer will write that recommendation. You will send that recommendation letter to him, the scholar, and he will print it and he will sign it and return it back to you. So you will write this thing to him. Sometimes this thing doesn't work. The other way does work. Other way is that if someone cited your work, then you can email to them that you cited my work there and I appreciate that. Uh, could you please help me in this uh, recommendation letter process? So that would help also. Okay. So once you have those five people, <clears throat> three to four in USA, and if you have one or two <clears throat> outside of <clears throat> outside of USA, that's okay. that's usually acceptable. Okay. Uh, so mm, so paper, uh, prepared draft. So see uh, the your lawyer. He is going to draft these five recommendation letters based on the profiles of those five researchers. You will provide profile of those researchers, like their Google Scholar uh, profile and their website, their personal website, so that they can, this lawyer can go, the, his team can go on in, online and can see uh, the strengths and positive points so that he can match his points, his strengths with your strengths, that you are actually the same uh, researcher in the same field. This is really important. Then send signed recommendation letter to your lawyer. <clears throat> so you will send those letters to scholars. They will sign and they will return it to you by email. <clears throat> and then you will put it in the Dropbox. This is an important milestone. 
Next, prepare, index, and organize documents. Of course, you need several other documents like your own CV, your uh, uh, papers, okay, and several other things that I'm going to share with you. And I will also tell you what is index. So provide, he will pro prepare index and you will provide required documents. Then he will prepare draft petition letter. Petition letter is like three to five pages. He will write that for you. It's actually like application with all your good uh, points, strengths. And then you will revise that petition. You can uh, suggest some addition if you want to edit it. Next phase is um, uh, revise application package. All the documents and recommendation letters and your CVs and your transcripts, your papers, everything is in the package. Once it's done, then uh, fill in this form. Actually, he will fill in. Uh, he will help you to fill in kind of if you have some problem. So you will fill in and you will send it to him. Is this correct or not? This is the application form now. Print all documents. You will print everything because he will submit by post, not by email or not. He cannot upload. Nobody can upload on the system. It's all manual paper based documentation. All right, and then you will pay the fee. This is 580 is the normal fee that to be paid to the USCIS uh, department, okay, US citizenship department. Uh, however, that I mentioned earlier, 15 days, 15 days is the magic, is the, that magic is done by this guy. You need to pay this fee 1225 for premium processing. If you don't pay that, your, you, uh, your application might take six months. So since you're, uh, you know, paying 5000 to this lawyer and some other processing things, and you are paying 580 here. So then you might think, and I did the same. I paid this fee and my case was approved within 15 days. All right, once case is approved, uh, once you pay this fee, then package is mailed and you receive the notification in uh, the 15 days of six months if you don't pay the premium fee. But in case of premium, you're going to get it in 15 days. And then you pay the rest of the 50% legal fee to the, <coughs> to the, to your lawyer. The thing is, uh, they are so sure, these lawyers are so sure that you will actually, your case will be approved. Okay. If not, it's like they're guaranteed that they will return your, uh, 50% you have paid earlier. This is amazing actually. So that's why they will evaluate your CV carefully in the beginning. Okay. Next, research publication. How many papers are needed? Uh, this is a frequently asked question. Uh, actually, my lawyer sent it to me because people keep asking these things. So he has prepared a FQA and he sent this. I'm copy pasting from him. I have five papers, 120 citations, seven manuscripts um, under review. So seven, seven manuscript reviews, okay? It means person has reviewed few uh, manuscripts. Is that enough? Actually, he is trying to say it's not enough. We need additional information, okay? Including journal conference published, who cited you, your academic background, how many years of experience do you, you have? Because five papers are not enough actually, okay? In my case, when I applied, I had more than 50 papers. Okay, citations are enough. Usually, one uh, if you have uh, more than 100 citations, that's okay. But five papers are really not enough. So he needs additional information to make your case strong. And he will how how he can know that you will send his your CV to him, and he will let you know is it possible or not. Okay, if not, he will not take your case. If it is possible with five papers, he will go for it. But in my opinion, if you have 30 papers, you uh, you would be good to go. Okay, less than 30 papers won't work, I guess. Maybe. Okay, documents. There are certain document that 
you will prepare and then certain documents will be prepared by you. I am listing here that will be prepared by you. These are the nine types of document. This is called indexing, exhibit one, two, until nine. Okay. And it's a lot of work, guys. Uh, kind of one to two months, you need to sit and work on these documents. Okay. Let's go through these one by one. Recommendation letter, those five recommendation letters from researchers, your personal information like CV and your transcripts, okay, your other awards, general publication, conference papers, citation summary from Google Scholar. You need to create Google Scholar profile online and I think USCIS will go online and check that to see that whether it's everything is correct. Citation highlights. This is important and really a tedious work. It means that who cited you? Who cited you? You need to highlight that. For example, if 100 uh, people are in 100 papers, your work has been cited. What you need to do is you need to download all those 100 papers and go through those papers that in which line uh, and what paragraph you were mentioned, you were cited. So you will, you will highlight using highlighter in PDF. Okay, you download PDF of all those papers that cited you and you will go through the line, line number, let's say 15, 16, 17, you were cited there. You will highlight that line or all those, that paragraph and those lines and then you will go to the reference section where your name is mentioned. <clears throat> your name and paper is mentioned so you will highlight that one as well. So you will have all those hundred papers and you will highlight each and every paragraph where you are mentioned and also highlight the reference section. This is number one. Number two, what I did also is I created a world map. I did not create it, I went online and interactive world map, you can also search on your online, interactive world map, where you can click with mouse a country like USA, uh, Russia, France, UK, you just click and that country is highlighted. Other countries are not highlighted. So what does it mean? Based on the citations, I went through each and every paper who cited me and I went through who are uh, these researchers, which country they belong to. For example, they belong to UK, France, okay, Australia. I, in my interactive map, I click those countries and I counted how many countries are there. In my case, 35 countries, people from 35 countries cited me. So that map, I captured that map and printed it and I put it in my CV. It was really a kind of a good point that, oh, okay, 35 people from 35 countries recognize your research, that's good. You might have 10 uh, countries or you might have uh, 50 or 100 countries. That's really good. All right, so I will show you my map also in a while. Review services. You might be reviewing some conference papers or journal papers or book chapters, right? So now it's time to dig up all those emails. This was a tedious job as well because I never cared about these things. I reviewed and I more than 120 papers I reviewed until the point of this uh, application. So I, I did not even remember those journals or conferences, many of them. Then I went through all my accounts and I found out so they need two things, invitation of for that uh, review and thank you email once you have done the review, two things. So you will copy paste those email, put in the Word document, make create a PDF, okay? All those, whatever you can dig out, whatever you can find, just copy paste all the, those reviewer services. You might be editor, that's good. And some people put your name on their website that you are in the editorial board, that's really good. Copy paste that screen, take a print, a screen, a print screenshot and put in Word and convert it into PDF. Then general ranking and paper ranking. You need to find out your papers were published in some journal or conference 
what is the ranking of that general like impact factor or Q1, Q2, Scopus, these things. So this is the list that you have to do. And these are actually folders and each one is a folder in a Dropbox. I'll show you uh, the organization. This is my own document, uh, you know, uh, my on my PC document list. Notice from one to nine, okay? Everything I have in these folders. This is like indexing as well. So uh, everything is here. All these folders contain all these information. You see that recommendation letters are here, conference and journal or whatever. I'll show you one of these folders. What is it? So this is my journal folder, although I put books also there. I had two edited books and also um, five book chapters. I did not put the whole books actually, just their first screen shot, first page where my name is there. Okay, And these are all journal papers. I'm showing only a few of these. Okay, So exhibit one, two, three and going on. These are my papers. You need all original files. Okay, Like published paper with the volume, issue and page numbering, all these paper, published papers. This is the word map I was uh, saying. See, citation map, I called it. And this green means all these countries have cited me. Okay, Many countries like Russia never cited me. <laughs> okay, So um, here I said at that time that uh, 35 countries actually cited me. That I mentioned somewhere up is not shown here. Okay. If I count these countries, there are 35 countries they cited me. So it's good, uh, kind of one of the important. All right, guys, this was uh, important information I thought I should share with you. So with the premium processing, you can really get uh, within uh, 15 days, your case will be approved. OK. Uh, however, what will happen after the uh, 15 days. After 15 uh, days, once your case is approved, then you will send some other documents to this USCIS department. What are other documents? The other documents are like uh, uh, your uh, marriage certificate, your uh, police certificate, police character certificate. They want to see that you, you, are, uh, you have a clean background. Okay, so you will post these by mail to these people. They will send you email that where to send. Okay, So that will take two months to process, but make sure that documents are correct and not expired. If any document is missing or uh, expired, you will send again to them. It will take another two months for them to process. So there's a long queue there. Many people are applying, right? So make sure in the first go, your documents are complete. And okay, two months, they will take two months. Okay, and then uh, they will send, once everything is done, they will send the, your documents to the US Embassy in your country where you have applied. Okay, it will take another two months al almost. And all those documents that you have submitted, they will send a copy of all those things to the Embassy. And in the Embassy, they will send you email for appointment. But before the appointment, they will ask you to go to the uh, for medical checkup. If you have any, uh, you will, they will take your lungs x-ray and some chicken pops and these things. If you have, for example, tuberculosis, TB, so they will ask you to treat it first. Or any communicable disease, they will check it first and if everything is okay, they will call for interview. Uh, they will, uh, you know, give you visa. If it is not, you have some problem and it is not possible to issue visa because of your communicable disease. So you will uh, go for interview. Interview will be there, no problem. And they will ask you, okay, where is the medical report? Because doctor will give you a medical letter that your result is awaited or you are under treatment like these things. So your interview, visa interview will be done 
but you will not get visa in that sense uh, until you are clear medically. Once you're medically clear, doctor will send a letter and report to the embassy and embassy will email you again that, okay, we have all your documents, submit your passport via uh, DHL or this service. So they will not ask you to come back again. They will just ask you to submit it. Uh, their own uh, prescribed kind of uh, service. So you will go there and you will submit your passport there and in one or two weeks you will get your visa. That's it. This is the whole story. And then US Embassy will give you a bundle, bundle of document, one bundle sealed. They will ask you not to open it and you will keep that uh, sealed document with your passport and visa and you will travel to USA and once you land here in the, any airport, you will give that sealed document to at the airport to the officer. And then they will stamp a visa and that visa will be valid for one year. That visa is called temporary green card. And then after one or two months, they will give you uh, social security card, they will mail it to you, post it to you, and then another after one and two months, they will send you a green card. So once you arrive in USA, it will take kind of one to three months, you will get social security number and green card. But because it will take three months, almost three to four months, can you do job? Yes, you can still do job because on your passport, they have that temporary green card kind of stamp. That actually they will put this I-140 stamp. It means it's uh, you are actually um, legally permanent resident at the day you arrive in USA. All right. And one more thing. Uh, during this three three months time, once you have not received your green card yet, they will ask you to come to a USCIS office physically. You will go there and they will take your fingerprints and take picture and you will sign digitally sign there and then they will issue you a green card okay after one month or so so that is a step okay guys good luck if you have any question feel free to ask me any kind of question and by the way this premium uh, processing or this kind of uh, uh, fast track program six months program without premium. It's not applicable for Chinese or Indian citizens. This is what they say on their website. You can also see, even your lawyer will also tell you. Okay, for Indians or Chinese, you have to wait for several years. Okay, for others, uh, uh, you can apply, even Iranians can apply. You know, there are some sanctions of these things. My Iranian friend, he applied and he got it, even during this time. Um, during the Trump administration time, they are still accepting these things. And my friend came here. So you're Vietnamese or Malaysian or these, I think you can apply. Okay, talk to your lawyer and he will let you know. I, want, I wanted to share with you that this program exists and many of our PhD or masters with really good experience and research, they don't know about this program. So you can do so. The whole expenditure is five, in my case, 5,000 plus, like 5,500 almost. I gave it to my lawyer, at his fee, and 2,000 around plus, I gave, uh, I paid fees to these governments, government departments, and some other mailing, uh, you know, uh, exp expenditure, DHL or FedEx and these things, some more, okay? So in my case, it cost me at most like 8,000 plus dollars. All right, so that's that's all guys. Okay, good luck. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Okay, bye.